Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not Israelites, now that majority of you have a basic knowledge and understanding on how to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, we will move on to the topic on how to maintain your deliverance. A lot of Israelites don't know when they've been delivered. Most Israelites don't know what deliverance looked like. As soon as the Most High delivered his people from spiritual bondage, many return into bondage because they are unaware that they have been set free. The Israelites who know they've been delivered from bondage don't know how to maintain their deliverance. The main reason some Israelites and indigenous black people don't know how to maintain their deliverance, religion played a key role in disabling the people of the Most High. While the Israelites and indigenous black people are distracted with religion, the idols of the heathens have blind their eyes. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Spiritual warfare is a battle. When you live on a battlefield, you fight. In addition, you're always on guard. The scriptures warn us to be alert because our adversaries are always looking for someone to devour. A lot of Israelites believe we are the final generation living in the times the scriptures call the last days. The signs of the times are upon us. Some Israelites believe because this is the last days, all they have to do is wait on the Most High to deliver them. Most Israelites believe Yahshua is coming any day now to save them. Israelites, did you know the disciples believed they were living in the last days when the disciples and many others gathered in a room when the Holy Spirit came? The effect the Holy Spirit had on the people who received the Spirit was that they began to speak in their native tongues. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? The scriptures clearly said the people began to speak in their native tongue. The workers of iniquity and religion indoctrinate the people to believe if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I wonder what tongues are they talking about? The scriptures clearly said everyone began to speak in their native language, not the gibberish we've heard and seen in religion. When the Holy Spirit came and everyone was speaking in their native tongues, the people thought those who were speaking in their native language were drunk. Peter stood up and addressed the cause to why the people were speaking in their native language. Peter said, prophecy is being fulfilled. Peter went on to say that the prophecy by the prophet Joel that said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh was being fulfilled. But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. But these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The prophecy of the Most High pouring out his spirit on his people for them to dream dreams and to prophesy. Peter declared that the prophecy came to pass in his generation when they received the Holy Spirit. When the Most High sent the Holy Spirit, that happened many years ago. According to Peter, the people alive at that time believed they were living in the last days. Fast forward to today, our generation is here and majority of Israelites believe we're in the last days. When Joseph shared the vision he had of the 12 tribes being scattered all over the world to his children, he said that the disperse of the 12 tribes would happen in its season in the last days. And hear ye, my children, also the vision which I saw. There were 12 hearts feeding, and the nine were first dispersed over all the earth, and likewise also the three. And I saw from Judah was born a virgin wearing a linen garment, and from her was born a lamb without spot. And on his left hand there was as it were a lion, and all the beasts rushed against him, and the lamb overcame them, and destroyed them, and trod them underfoot. And because of him the angels and men rejoiced, and all the land. And these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days. The Israelites were scattered over 400 years ago. The current generation of Israelites living in the diaspora are the descendants of the Israelites who were sold into slavery and scattered all over the world. Many generations have come and gone, and they believe they were living in the last days. Joseph's vision came to pass long before our generation existed. This generation believed they're living in the last days. Israelites, just because some of us believe we're living in the last days or we may be the final generation, we still have to be vigilant and alert. Living in the last days doesn't mean you sit around waiting on the Most High to take vengeance. While you're waiting on the Most High to vindicate you, your enemies continue to find ways to devour you. Israelites, the Satans will continue to tempt you until the very last day and hour. Regardless if you believe we're the final generation, you have to put on the armor of the Most High. You still have to fight until you transition to the afterlife. Regardless if you're one of the few predestined to witness the day Michael, the great prince, stand up for our people and all the righteous, you have your personal battles. Remember, Israelites, many prophecies have to be fulfilled before our redemption. All things written must be fulfilled. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Israelites, don't let the signs of the times become a distraction. When it comes to your spiritual journey, you have to have balance. Too many Israelites are focused on prophecy instead of the battle that is taking place in front of them. The battle for your mind. The battle for your destiny. Israelites, don't forget about your personal battle to free yourself from spiritual bondage. Our redemption is prophesied. While we wait for our redemption, we have individual battles we must deal with. Don't let religion's one-size-fit-all narrative cause you to neglect the war in front of you. A lot of Israelites in the awakening are focused on what's happening everywhere around the world. They forget to pay attention to what's happening in their personal life. The scriptures reveal to us that the Satans have the power to do lying wonders. They can imitate the signs of the times. You have to differentiate the Satan's lying wonders with the prophecies from the Most High. All prophecy will be fulfilled at its appointed time in the way the Father said it would happen. We have seen the workers of iniquity in the beast system imitate prophecy. Israelites, be vigilant and spend time in the presence of the Father so that you won't be deceived by the false miracles and lying wonders from the Satans. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. While we are discussing lying wonders, I believe the recent alien sighting in Peru was a lying wonder. The beast media claim majority of the tribes that live in remote places are uncontacted people. It's difficult to have a conversation with the tribes that are not involved with society. The moment a seven-foot alien shows up in their backyard, the beast media can reach those people. Israelites, the workers of iniquity go to great length to hide the remains of the giants found all over the world. Suddenly, a floating giant alien show up in a remote village in South America. They have coverage. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand when the Satans want to deceive or imitate the Most High. Making themselves known and visible to humans is not the way they operate. Remember, Satan and his angels was cast down to the earth. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Israelites, we live among the fallen angels. Since the fall of these wicked angels, we have yet to have a sighting of Lucifer and other principalities in the flesh. The workers of iniquity love to do their dirt in secret. The workers of iniquity hate being exposed. The Satans want you to believe the seed of the fallen and everything about them are myths and fairy tales. That way, when they deceive you, nobody will believe they exist. And everyone will discredit you for believing in what they call fairy tales. Israelites, use discernment when it comes to the signs of the times and the scriptures. The remnant elect will not be deceived by the lying wonders from the spiritual wickedness in high places. The population of the elect is not the majority. Therefore, many will be deceived by the lying wonders from the Satans because the population of the wicked is broad. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, you're not going to see a seven-foot alien taking a seat in the third temple and declaring himself to be the Most High when the men of sin comes on the scene. The fallen angels can transform themselves. Israelites, with today's technology, it wouldn't surprise me if the workers of iniquity put a hologram of a floating seven-foot alien in the sky to scare the people. Most people who live in remote villages are not that familiar with advanced technology. The workers of iniquity know that most people who live in major cities and suburbs are well acquainted with AIs and technology. These people would know the difference. With today's CGI, computer-generated imagery, you can make anything happen. There's technology out today that can take your image and place you in a location and make it appear as if you were there. Recently, a woman was wrongfully accused of committing a crime. The facial recognition AI failed. Israelites, we must use discernment. The scripture said in the book of Enoch that the fallen can take many forms. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand, till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. Israelites, the fallen angels take many forms to deceive, just as you heard in the book of Enoch. Revealing their true identity and appearance is not going to make the people follow them. Instead, the people will begin to rebuke these devils if they knew who and what they are. That is why no one would recognize Lucifer or any of the fallen angels when they walk among us in the flesh. The scripture said in the book of Isaiah that when the Most High exposed Satan, many will be shocked by his appearance. A lot of people will say, this is the man that have terrorized the world. The scriptures reveal the people will not be impressed. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms? 
that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. When the holy angels walk among us today, they take on the likeness of humans to operate. The angel that took on the appearance of man to save Lot and his family before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah confirmed the angels can transform themselves. Jacob, our father, had a dream where he saw the angels ascending and descending upon the earth. The prince over our people and the commander of chief to the army of the Most High, the holy angel Michael, took on the appearance of a man when he came to assist Joshua when they were going to battle in Jericho. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? A lot is happening behind the scenes, Israelites. The angels of the Most High are everywhere in the physical realm. Because the Most High took the bright nature away from Adam and Eve, we can no longer see the angels operating among us with our physical eyes. We can only see them when they transform and take on the likeness of a human being. Israelites, if we see the angels in their actual essence, it would scare us to death. We are not used to seeing them in their true nature. That is why the people in Peru and all who have ever seen what they describe as aliens are afraid. The fallen angels and the holy angels are not going to make themselves visible to you for no reason. The seed of the fallen most certainly will not expose themselves in that manner unless the day of the Most High is here. Be careful about the Satan's lying wonders. Israelites, I notice in the awakening, a lot of Israelites is making it seem as if your redemption is a few hours away. I share scriptures revealing how our ancestors believed they lived in the last days. Israelites, use discernment. The scripture said nobody knows the day. Most people are speculating based on the times we're living in. The Satan's lying wonders will deceive many. The Most High will preserve the remnant elect to not fall for the lying wonders the workers of iniquity and the Satans will do to deceive the masses. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Israelites, don't get too consumed with end time prophecies that you forget about the battle that is in front of you. Allow the Most High to direct your path so that you have balance on your spiritual journey. The personal battle that is at your doorstep should be your priority. The battle for our redemption belongs to the Most High. The way the Most High will redeem His people has been determined and already happened in the spirit realm. We all know the results of the battle. The righteous prevail over the Satans and the workers of iniquity. Our redemption has been sealed and the battle has been won. At the appointed time, it will manifest in the physical realm. When it comes to the personal battle that is in front of you, those battles are pending. Depending on your choices will determine if you will be a part of the redeemed righteous or will you follow the God of this world and all the wicked to the lake of fire. To the Israelites and the indigenous black people who choose to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, the scripture said many are the afflictions of the righteous. However, the Most High would deliver the righteous out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. As you can see, Israelites, the righteous will have many battles. In order for the Most High to step in to help you in your personal afflictions, you have to engage in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is when you involve the Most High in the conflict. In spiritual warfare, you're asking the Most High to deliver you from demonic oppression and every attack against you. Spiritual warfare is taking the battle to the front door of the devil that is oppressing you.
spiritual warfare is saying enough is enough. When you involve the most high in the battle through spiritual warfare, make sure the life you live pleases the most high. If not, you will lose the battle. The enemy used the art of distraction to put many of you in spiritual bondage. While many Israelites are focused on being at the right place at the right time because of the signs of the times, the unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity that oppress your life in the spirit realm will continue to find success because your focus is on everything else but the war that is in front of you. Some of you are under heavy demonic oppression, yet you're in everyone else's business. You're trying to correct other people while you have legions of unclean spirits operating in you. The scripture said, take the beam out of your eyes first so that you can see to remove the moat out of your brothers and sisters' eyes. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. A lot of Israelites are influenced by legions of demons. Unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity are ravishing their lives. They are losing the war in front of them, yet they are condemning other people. You have no room to fight other people's battles when you're under heavy demonic oppression. Deal with the legions of devils in your life first. Failing to deal with the issues in your personal life will cause even greater issues. Issues like generational curses. The signs of the times are here to let us know where we are on our journey to redemption. Israelites, the signs of the times is not supposed to stop you from dealing with the personal battles that are at your front door. One of the reasons so many Israelites can't maintain their deliverance, they allow the Satans in the kingdom of darkness to distract them. When you're distracted, you will fail to see when the devils return to reestablish the covenant. By the time you have realized the spirit of poverty or infirmity have reestablished a covenant, the result of their infiltration have manifested in the physical realm. Israelites, beware of when the devil return. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. A lot of Israelites are not expecting the devil to return after deliverance. Some Israelites believe when the Most High delivered them, they will never face oppression again. Israelites, that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. The Most High can deliver you from the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes. The next day or several months later, you start to see symptoms of diabetes. The reason you're seeing the symptoms to diabetes, the unclean spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes is trying to reestablish the covenant. If you're distracted with the affairs of this world and fail to see the spirit of infirmity fighting against you, the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes will successfully reestablish the covenant. The most common way the spirit of infirmity established covenants in the spirit realm, when you eat in the dream or a worker of iniquity is feeding you in the dream. Being fed in the dream is a witchcraft attack. If the spirit of infirmity is a problem for you, when you're distracted, you will find yourself eating in the dream. When you wake up, the worker of iniquity will send a spirit to cause you to forget your dream. When you forget the dream, you also forget to cancel the covenant. When you fail to cancel the covenant, the Satans are successful in placing you in bondage again. A lot of Israelites return to bondage and fail to maintain their deliverance when they don't resist the devil. The scripture said, when you submit to the Most High and resist the devil, it will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Israelites who successfully resist the devil, your flesh body will suffer the effect of the spirit of infirmity trying to reestablish the covenant. However, the symptoms will disappear and you will quickly recover. Some Israelites mistake the devil returning as a sign of the Most High not delivering them. Like I've stated in previous chapters in this series, when everything falls apart, you're facing trials after trials, you successfully break the covenant and won the battle. The devil that was cast out is fighting with you to return. If you serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, make sure to keep a positive mind. 
cast down all the wicked imaginations. The Satan's war with you in your mind. In the mix of the devil returning, they will bombard you with negative thoughts. Don't fall for it, but cast down those wicked thoughts. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The scripture said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Make sure to counter the negative thoughts with positivity. By doing that, the devil will flee from you. Israelites, did you know you can invite unclean spirits to tempt you with negative thoughts? You also can establish covenants with the negative thoughts the Satan's put into your mind. Israelites, it's extremely important to cast down those wicked imaginations. If the Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty and you're rehearsing that you're broken your mind and you speak those words out of your mouth, you gave the spirit of poverty an invitation to return. Be careful with the words you speak. Another reason Israelites are having a hard time maintaining their deliverance, a lot of Israelites assume their Israelite heritage make them righteous. In addition, they don't have to do a thing but wait on the Messiah to do all the work for them. If this is your belief and mindset, the Satans have deceived you. Your Israelite heritage is not going to stop a devil from oppressing you. Your Israelite heritage is not going to save you. Repenting and returning to the Father will save you. The scripture said, all the wicked of his people will die. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Judgment starts with the Israelites. Don't let the Satans make you believe because you're an Israelite, you have an automatic ticket to eternity with the Father. The Most High is giving all the descendants of Adam and Eve the opportunity to repent and serve him. Everyone have to decide to serve the Father. Nobody is going to make that decision for you. The scripture said only a remnant will return to the Father. Despite the massive population of the Israelites, only a remnant will make the decision to return to the Father. Regardless if you're an Israelite or not, you have to decide to return. The Father is not going to make that decision for you. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Don't let religion deceive you into believing the God of this world took your sins away and all you have to do is believe. Before the Messiah, John said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Sitting around waiting on the Father to do all the work for you will not give you the result that you're looking for. Another reason so many Israelites return into bondage after the Most High has delivered them, they are not living a life that pleased the Father. The scripture said, when your ways please the Father, he will make your enemies at peace with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. If your enemies are waging war with you and you can't find peace, you need to examine yourself to see if there's an offense against you. If sin is found, the Most High is not listening to your prayers. Remember, sin separates you from the Father. Sin will hinder your prayers. If the Most High is not listening to your prayers, you don't have the help of the Father and you don't have access to the army of the Most High. If the angels the Most High gave charge over you are not delivering you, when the Satans, the unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity come to steal, kill, and destroy, your deliverance will be short-lived. Israelites, make sure you're living a life that pleases the Father. When the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, the Father will make your enemy your footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Religion have indoctrinated the people to believe they can live any kind of lifestyle and the Father will accept their abominations and bless their sins. Sin separates you from the Most High. Israelites, that is why it's important to repent daily. When I say repent, I'm talking about true repentance. Repenting is not saying, I repent and continue to behave in the way that gave the Satans and the workers of iniquity access to put you into bondage. True repentance will cause you to turn away from the sin that caused the affliction. True repentance will bring behavior changes. Another way your deliverance is cut short, unbelief. The spirit of unbelief will cause you to doubt the most high. A double-minded person is unstable in everything they do. If you serve the father and you truly believe in him, 
Make sure that you believe he is capable of doing what he say he will do. For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Majority of Israelites don't believe the Most High is able to deliver them. Some allow the Satans to deceive them to underestimate the power of the Most High. A lot of Israelites allow the present condition of our people to discourage them. You have to remember a lot of Israelites made the decision to serve the idols of the heathens. Some Israelites choose to follow the heathens. A lot of our people are as wicked as the heathens. There are some Israelites that don't have any faith in the Most High. In spiritual warfare, you can't doubt the Most High. You have to believe that the words of the Most High will not return to him void. If the Father said he will provide for you and protect you, Israelites, remind the Father of his words and hold him accountable for what he said he will do. A lot of you are living a defeated life because you don't ask the Father for help. When some of you ask for help, you lack confidence and you doubt the Most High. The spirit of unbelief hinder you. If you believe the Most High has delivered you, stand on it. Don't be afraid to approach the Father and remind him of his words. Israelites, go boldly in the throne room of the Most High so that you can obtain mercy in a time of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Israelites, there is a difference between being bold and being arrogant. Make sure to be bold with respect. A lot of people ask me, how do I do it? And how do I continue in this walk? This walk is hard. Israelites, believe it or not, I hold the Most High accountable. And I tell him exactly how I feel. And I expect the Most High to show up for me and I stand on it. When the enemy comes with the spirit of doubt, I cast down those wicked imaginations. Israelites, it's either you believe the Most High or you don't. Great faith will move mountains and cause the devils to flee from you. Having faith in the Father is believing that he can do exceedingly and above all that you can imagine. What is your faith if you don't believe the Father? Sometimes the Father tests your faith. Israelites, don't fail the test. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Israelites, it's important that you maintain your deliverance. Just because you won the battle, it doesn't mean the war is over. Remember, the devil always returns. The scripture said when the devil returns, it finds his house clean and everything in order. Then the devil decides to bring other devils more wicked than itself to try to enter your life. Israelites, this is where you have to recognize when the devil returns to resist the devil. When you're distracted like many Israelites are in the awakening, you're not going to see when the devil returns until it manifests in the physical realm. Israelites, it's better to shut down the devil in the spirit realm before the covenant manifests in the physical realm. Once the evil covenant manifests, you have to engage in spiritual warfare and experience all kinds of trials before you're delivered. This is why you should prioritize the war in front of you instead of the great war that is in the hands of the Father that has already been won. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. The Most High said to his people in the book of Chronicles, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The purpose of the awakening is for the people of the Most High to humble themselves, repent, and return to the Father. The Most High has been pleading with His people to return to Him. The awakening is giving this generation the opportunity not only to return to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, but to get to know the Most High, the God of Israel. All religious faith in the beast system don't serve the Most High. 
The awakening is giving this generation an opportunity to get to know the Father. Unfortunately, too many Israelites have lost sight of humbling themselves. Some are declaring themselves to be great prophets and condemning many to hell. The enemy managed to distract a lot of Israelites. So many are consumed with the destruction of the beast system. Israelites, the destruction of the Satan's kingdom will surely come to pass. That war has already been won. Too many Israelites are focusing on the wrong thing. The personal war in front of you is far more dangerous than the war against the kingdom of darkness. A massive earthquake can take place and some Israelites are like, Yahshua is coming, prepare to leave. A tsunami destroyed a nation. The Israelites say, God is judging the wicked. The heathens say an alien was spotted in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The Israelites are like the scripture said, strange things would come out of the Euphrates River when it dried up. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Some Israelites know to repent when they see chaos in the beast system. They know how to apply the word and recognize the signs of the times. When an unclean spirit comes to attack them, they are lost and don't know what to do. The spirit of poverty will rob an Israelite in the spirit realm. That Israelite don't flinch. The spirit of infirmity waged war against them by afflicting their body. Some Israelites respond with, I will use over-the-counter medicine to heal myself. Marine spirits are destroying their children with all kinds of sexual perversions. Some Israelites respond with, love is love. The Satans have distracted and desensitized some Israelites from the war against them that most Israelites don't view the attacks from unclean spirits as a threat or a battle. Because so many Israelites ignore the war in front of them, the kingdom of darkness successfully put them back into bondage after they have been delivered. Some Israelites have to get their priorities in order. The scripture said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, this scripture should wake you up to prioritize the war in front of you. The battle is with the unseen, the principalities and dark powers of this world. When you battle, you're not fighting flesh. Why do you let the Satans distract you with the affairs of the flesh? Shift your focus to the spirit. When you focus on the unseen, you will be able to see when the devil returns with seven other devils more wicked than itself to fight against you. When you're vigilant and alert, you will see an attack coming from a mile away. By the time the devil gets to you, you've submitted to the Most High and prepared yourself to resist the devil. The devil have no choice but to flee from you. If you want to remain free, you have to maintain your deliverance. Spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. Disembodied spirits are looking for a home. Israelites, don't let your body become a haven for unclean spirits like the man in the tomb. Your body is the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High in your spirit. Let the unclean spirits know that there's no room for them in you. Israelites, let those devils be tormented in the dry places they have been cast to when the Most High delivered you. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah.